Well, moving on to the last and the final session for the day, and it couldn't get better, but the next speaker absolutely needs no introduction. He's an Indian executive who's the current CEO of India Media Brands, managing the second largest media agency group. He's also actively involved in the various industry bodies, such as the Advertising Standards Council of India, the Advertising Agencies Association of India, the Broadcast Audience Research Council India. He's also an honorable member of the prestigious Facebook India Client Council, an alumni of IIT Kanpur and IIT, uh, IIM um, uh, Bangalore, where he was recently conferred the most distinguished alumni award. Uh, an industry veteran with over 30 years of experience, he's somebody who's built a highly awarded team of professionals and organizations that today form the country's leading media network. Please uh, join me in welcoming none other than Shashi Sinha, CEO India, Media Brands. Thank you so much, Mr. Sinha, for joining us and giving us valuable time. It's great to have you and great to see you after one of the events uh, we recently attended. Over to you. Thank you very much. So thank you first for uh, everyone, HD4 Media, and all of you, uh, you know, Ravna, to have me here. It's always a pleasure to talk. Even more excited uh, to talk about uh, television in the uh, digital world. Uh, I'm a big believer of television and happy to see that your sponsors in Colors and TV and uh, ABP both are television networks, first of all, the digital networks. So uh, without much ado, I will get going. I don't have a presentation, but I want to make a few thoughts, which I thought I would uh, quickly uh, speak and present to the audience there. Uh, as always, I'll be direct. I've known for speaking uh, my views out clearly. So I will. So, you know, this whole thing, the topic itself says it and the buzz around is. TV as an advertising medium in the digital world. So it, the implication is that we already moved to a digital world and uh, TV just happens to be part of it. And, uh, and there's no harm in saying that because I tell you why. A couple of reports which our industry and our fraternities put out in the last one month, including the Pitch Madison report, which says that uh, even my team is saying that, that digital will go past television in terms of addicts this year. And uh, that's a very big news for the first time in the country's history it will be bigger. But there is a bit of a fallacy and a bit of a catch in that, you know. So it's while, firstly, these are all approximations. No one has clear numbers. TV, of course, people uh, can monitor through BAP, but digital is very difficult. It's so fragmented, difficult to uh, uh, monitor. Having said that, let's assume the numbers are uh, indicative and right. Uh, the limited point I want to make is that digital is many things. You know, it's not, it's amorphous mass. There are many things to it. But if I was to break it up into two clear parts, the first part is performance. And the second part is the brand building part. I'm just purposely for simplicity, making it just two parts, there will be many more parts. Uh, now, uh, performance is something which I personally feel is a sizable part of uh, digital, is a long-term future, is very good, and it really works. We run a lot of CRM there, but that's not what it is all about, you know? So uh, what will happen to performance as we go, and I'm, this is over television, so I'll not talk about it, but two years down the line, when the google world comes in, what will be to, uh, you know, PIs, APIs, all that, that's a discussion on another day. And therefore companies are building their first book party data. Coming back to television. So if you look at the brand building part of television or the advertising or the display part, as they call it, of uh, digital, it's still very small compared to television. Television is still far bigger. If I may hazard a guess, maybe television is double the size of uh, that so-called brand building display part of uh, digital, if not more. And I tell you, I believe it will remain that way. And that's a strong statement I'm making at the risk of sounding uh, old fashioned, but let me tell you there is enough juice and meat left in television. And the reason I say that is as follows, you know. So first is today, uh, television, even today, the, uh, the uh, you know, we have not reached full potential. As all of you know, television is about 67% penetration, which means approximately 78, 79 crore, uh, indiv 72 crore individuals who watch television, you know, on a weekly basis. And if you break this up on some data provided with BAP, there's the advantage of being in an industry body that they provided, you know, they're probably 32, 33 crore individuals who only watch on television. And uh, maybe more, 39 crores who watch only television. There are about 33 crores who watch TV and uh, digital together. And digital by itself has about 8 to 10 crore individuals who watch only digital don't come to television. So the fact is, out of the 72 crore individuals on TV who watch television, Half of them, or close to half of them, or more than half of them, are uh, only uh, TV viewers. So there is a sizable chunk. Before I build my case for on qualitative factors, let me say there is a sizable chunk of people who are 
uh, only looking at television. India is a large country. Growth of India will come. Growth in urban is relatively low compared to rural. Don't go by the last 12 months. But overall, rural will grow faster, which is where chances are a lot of these TV homes, standalone TV individuals are. So there's a lot of juice as, as they penetrate, as categories penetrate, as distribution becomes important for many, many categories, you will find that television uh, will be the only way to reach these people. That's one point which I'm making. The second point which I'm making, which I think is a critical point to make, uh, is that you see all prices in India have been very low. The TV guys were the first to suffer. Their entire business was 70 to 80% on the advertising model. The, the money which they made on distribution, nothing, you know. And uh, consequently, because of the government intervention to NTO and otherwise, uh, you know, you found that uh, the, the prices were very low for consumers and you don't expect prices to go up dramatically. So cost of getting a cable connection is not very high in that sense. And that will remain stable. So it may go up and down, but that will remain stable. So my point is penetration will not be as difficult as the competition. And you'll wonder why I'm saying this. The reason is today India, because of Jio, has one of the cheapest, uh, uh, you know, prices for internet in the world. Uh, if you apply, even if you apply purchasing power parity, it is the cheapest uh, in the world. No one else there. The question, the moot question, is how long will it remain? And especially for video, where the consumption of uh, bandwidth is very high, so will they be? And this is the question I'm posing. It's a rhetorical question. My answer is probably there will be inflation, which will be far far higher than television in terms of uh, you know uh, internet subscription and internet costs and when that becomes you know india is a very value conscious uh, country will that start pinching question i'm asking myself will that start pinching will that slow down it may not slow down penetration of internet because internet has many other advantages but will it slow down video consumption consumption of content uh, on internet so that's a question i pose so my to my friends who think you know that uh, this will be wiped out tv will be wiped out it's a long, long way, a long, long way away. So that's the second thing which I raise. So one is the numbers. There are a sizable number of people who are on TV alone. Second is even the people who are doing TV plus digital, which is about 23 crore individuals, will they sustain this heavy consumption which is happening even because, because of the prices of uh, internet going up over the next two to three year window. The third point is even today, look at the consumption. So bar most people don't know, Bach has some pilot uh, panels already in place where there is much TV plus digital consumption, about 9,000 homes or so. And even today, if you see in those homes, uh, the data which is coming, that on a weekly, on a daily basis, two and a half hours of TV consumption in about 30 minutes of, uh, 30 odd minutes, 32 minutes of OTT consumption. I'm keeping other stuff on uh, internet, you know, uh, social media and news and all that out. But OTT consumption, which is video consumption in a way like to like, for my whole original hypothesis of brand building, you know, which is video, long format and stuff like that. So my, my point is that even today in those homes, which are these 33 crore homes where TV plus digital is there, TV consumption is still far higher than uh, digital consumption or OTT consumption. And TV prices, TV, TV subscription prices are not work as dramatically as chances are internet prices. So there's going to be an issue there. So I think there is enough juice in television Coming on to, uh, you know, the other point which I want to make, which is, uh, yeah, a very interesting point. So, which I was observing, you know, and you see it in India, you see it all over the world. So today, you know, look at this, look at the, look at the, um, the oddity in this. All the big global companies, and I'll explain to you the reason why, all the big global companies who are strong on the digital side, Amazon, Google, Facebook, you name them. They all spend in the advertising budgets all over the world, even in deeply penetrated markets where digital consumption is very high, spend almost 40 to 50% of their money on television. So there must be some method to the madness. And my hypothesis, that's primarily because the power of the, for two reasons. One is the power of brand building, which I started off by saying, is far easier on television. You know, television always uh, provides you that, uh, that canvas and provides you the scale and provides you the ability to you know, build the brand in its entirety rather than a small screen where uh, on a mobile device where you're seeing the, the story on the brand. So, so brand building is that much more possible. Secondly, television also gives you an impact. You can reach thousands of thousands of people at the same time. So by definition, digital is all about personalization. You see it at your convenience and your time and your frame. So that takes time to build up reach. Reach finally will be built up, but uh, you know, 
if you put an ad on IPA, the whole world sees it, you know, uh, and it's a quick way to launch a product to get visibility. Because today in the world of short attention spans, you need talkability and talkability also comes from television, a new campaign making or a new product launched uh, on the large scale with impact. And which is why, think about it. If you see big properties, big properties in the world, be it Super Bowl in US or IPL in India, if you see the rights which go, you know, you will find almost 70% to 80% value being ascribed to the TV rights and about 25 to 30% being ascribed to the digital rights. Is there a story in that? That, you know, if TV, if digital in CPMs is far better, if digital was uh, growing as dramatically as it may be out to be, then why would people, why would broadcasters and uh, uh, invest so heavily on big ticket premium properties on television? Because primarily because they know there's value. Look at IPL in India. So if you look at India, you know, uh, 75 to 80% of the revenue comes from TV, 20% from digital. The numbers are huge in digital. Concurrent viewership of the finals are huge. But the fact is that uh, the revenue gets written there because of the reasons you mentioned about impact. And when I say impact, it's not a qualitative feed. It's a quick buildup of reach, which matters in a country where attention spans are low, where ratings are fragmented, you know, getting a 1% rating 90% of the time, no program gets you 1% rating. In that context, to have a program gives you 10 rating in one shot. It's not only about the numbers of uh, CPRPs or ratings, it's also about the impact it creates, that large bus it creates, there's so many people, 10% of whatever, 70 crore uh, individuals have watched it, and 7 crore people at one shot, seeing your commercial. And that's why the power of brand building. Brand building is also about the emotion, but also the emotion across so many people. So I think that is, to me, the largest case I build for uh, television, that television has a role to play, will continue to sustain. And the final few points I want to make, uh, in this context is that, uh, you know, finally it's about content. So television is a, um, uh, is a means to an end. Today with connected TV, finally is TV being watched. Uh, and before I come to that, sorry. So this whole short-term craze of OTT also at some point in time will catch on because it's regulation. You know, there's no censorship and stuff like that. So that's a craze. But look at a long-term point of view. And the long-term point I was making was that, you know, finally it's about content. This distribution is a mechanism, whether you put it on television, you put it on digital, wherever it is. Now, the point is that today, if you notice that a lot of content companies are catering to the OTT market or the video market, and not counting Facebook and Google and keeping them aside for the time being, are not really making money. While those, the profitability of organizations who are content creators is coming from where the TV is, because they've cracked the model on TV. So in spite of getting low revenue share from uh, distribution revenue, and mainly sustaining 75-80% of advertising, they still are making money. All the networks, be it uh, Viacom or uh, Sony or uh, Star or Z, they're all the four big networks of the sun. They're all profitable. And that is the content they're fueling in. So finally, they're fueling content. The content is now is getting short-term eyeballs on OTT because of you know, the kind of content which is edgy, which is not censored, and it allows you. But because the capability of television or tomorrow, if they start shrinking money on TV, they're not going to put that money on digital. And digital, India is such a price sensitive country, you never get subscription value. Look at Netflix, you know, 150 bucks or 149, 170 bucks or whatever they're charging. So you'll never be able to generate revenue from subscription to that extent. It will always be advertising funded to a large extent. And minute you personalize, your CPMs have to come down because, you know, you're not getting the impact. So the hypothesis I'm building up, that for a variety of these reasons, the business model will be such that uh, you will have a situation where really nearly TV, uh, the TV, the networks, content networks, content companies will have to ensure that they have to feed a TV monster, which will give them the money, and then they invest wherever they want to invest. So I know it's very right and right to say that digital is the future. Your topic says it first that, you know, TV as an advertising medium in the digital world, it says it away. But I believe there's a lot of juice left in television. And my final point is the original point, which is the simplistic point that, 72 crore homes, 72 crore individuals watch TV, there's a lot of headroom there, and the markets will go there. And out of those 39 crore TV uh, homes, which are TV individuals, which are just TV, they will get their own digital, but digital day time because of the past which I mentioned. So I think I, I sum it by saying that, you know, there's a lot of use in the television. You see in TV addicts growing, uh, and prediction for TV addicts, it'll keep growing. But the value TV provides in terms of brand building, in terms of impact, is never going to go away. The only thing which can work probably TV and digital can work in tandem and for which uh, this platform which you're providing uh, plays a great role. I think in terms of seamless meshing of content is an opportunity. 
and I think we have a job to do that in terms of ensuring the seamless uh, measurement across. So BAP unfortunately has been slow on this, but they have embarked on this whole thing of TV plus digital measurement. And it's not BAP's fault. It's the stakeholder managing the you know, BAP is the industry body. So managing stakeholders becomes a big issue. But I'm hopeful that in the next 12 to 18 months, they will be able to ensure that there is uh, seamless integration of uh, TV plus digital measurement. As I'm noticing the pilots, I alluded to some pilots, which some of us are privy to, but those pilots are very successful if they're scaled up. Then this single measurement, then people will have a view of both medium together, one video view, one integrated view, and then maybe money will move both ways uh, faster. But uh, in conclusion, for the reasons which I mentioned, a lot of headroom, you know, uh, big impact, properties, quick build up of reach, and profitable juice in the companies, in the content side, as a result, TV is here to stay it's there all over the world, so too in India. That is my case. Thank you so much, Mr. Sinha. It's always uh, such an honor listening to you and hearing you. You know, when we have a media mogul like you coming on the screen, it definitely we couldn't have asked for a better closing to our uh, hashtag TV First uh, conference. Thank you once again. Thank you, Emil Babna. Thank you for the kind words.